Hey guys, it's Elite here. So if you haven't noticed, I've been kind of taking a break from Mech Assault recently. It wasn't really something I planned, but it just kind of happened I guess. I mean, I'm only doing these mods for fun, like I'm not really getting anything out of it, other than like, you guys enjoying it I guess. But sometimes I just gotta take a step back. Uh, but yeah, basically I wanted this video to focus on some of my unfinished mods. Like my work in focus mods I guess. Just so I can give you guys an idea for like where my head's at right now and what I've been working on. Oh and uh, this doesn't mean I'm like not working on any other type of mods. I have like a lot of mod ideas and like notes and like stuff I've been working on. But these are the ones I've had like the most progress. So first up would be some of the unfinished maps I had from when I was working on the multiplayer mod. I think I said this in like one of my multiplayer like discussion videos I guess. Where I said that I had some maps that I didn't finish or I was planning to do. And yeah these are some of them. I didn't record like all the maps. Like I had some of the maps from campaign like the campaign maps that I was like converting to multiplayer. And I was doing some more like unique styles like how I did the winter version of Colosseum and stuff. But this is basically... I was basically planning on porting some Mech Assault 2 maps to Mech Assault 1. And when I say porting, I don't really mean porting if that makes sense. Uh, technically, I'm like recreating it from the ground up. But with one, exp uh, one, eh, one exception. The terrain itself is like a one-to-one -one copy from Mech Assault 2. Like I literally copied the code from Mech Assault 2 for the terrain straight into like a Mech Assault 1 styled map. So the terrain should be exactly one-to-one. -one. So far I've only tested like I think uh, Moving Grounds and New River, New River City. And those worked fine because they're very similar to like two of the Mech Assault 1 maps. I think other maps would work as well, but it'd have to be similar to a Mech Assault 1 styled map for it to work, I think. Or at least effectively work. But yeah, only the terrain itself can be copied to Mech Assault 1 and 2. And the only reason specifically the terrain can be copied is because they basically used the same code for between games. They like didn't really update it. So it's kind of like interchangeable between the two. But everything else was updated and doesn't really work in Mech Assault 1, like including textures, uh, and especially objects. Objects can't be ported between the two games because they both use different style like files. So that would have to be figured out if you want to copy objects, I guess. Like even the skybox is has to be recreated. Mech Assault 1's skyboxes are so limited compared to Mech Assault 2. So I just tried to recreate it the best I can. I mean, if you're like watching like the gameplay I guess right now for the map in the background, this is like nowhere near completed. Like I was just like messing around testing stuff to like try and get an idea for how like successful this kind of map could be. This is kind of like what I was trying to recreate. I created like some of it so far just to give myself an idea for what it'd be like. And yeah, this is definitely the most complicated style of multiplayer map I was trying to do for the multiplayer mod. Probably why I didn't include it in the mod yet, at least. Because yeah, even this tiny bit of work that I have, it's like two to three days of like actual work, like without breaks, I guess. Not with breaks, but like, you know what I mean. But yeah, I was basically just wanted to give you an idea for like what's possible and the kind of stuff I was working on. I said, yeah, I was doing some like campaign maps into multiplayer that I didn't get to finish. I didn't <laughs> record any gameplay of that yet. But yeah, I just wanted to see how the multiplayer mod would do itself. But yeah, as of right now, this is how much progress I have. Also, I think I showed this in... I'm pretty sure I showed this in one of my, like, modding videos. That it's actually a lot easier to port from Mech Assault 1 to Mech Assault 2. Since Mech Assault 2 is, like, built to actually, like, handle the same thing as Mech Assault 1. But with just new additions. But even then... You still can't really port Mech Assault 1 objects into Mech Assault 2 since they updated the like object type. So if I port it to Mech Assault, if I port Mech Assault 1 map to Mech Assault 2, it'll come up with like errors basically because those objects don't exist anymore. Or even if I include it, it still wouldn't be able to use it because it's not made to use those kind of objects. 
But yeah, anyway, moving on to the next unfinished mod. I think I've said this in the Discord a few times. I don't think I've really said it in a video that much. But obviously I've, well maybe not obviously, but I have been planning to do Mech Assault 2 mods. I've done a few Mech Assault 2 mods, like showing, showcasing them. I haven't really released anything yet because, I mean, I haven't really done anything that big for Mech Assault 2 yet. Other than like, like the dev menu and stuff and other stuff. But I've been working on, or at least I'll say I've been testing a lot of things to do with Mech Assault 2 Grinder. What I want to do is something very similar to like the Grinder and Hearts in Mech Assault 1. But yeah, just the Mech Assault 2 basically. Mech Assault 2 is a lot harder to like make mods for in general. But the, one of the main reasons why it's harder to make mods for it is because Mech Assault 2 is only on console. Like I can't test stuff on an emulator which is like 10 million times faster. So if I want to test a mod on Mech Assault 2, I have to mod the files, then put it onto my Xbox, then load up the game on my Xbox, which isn't the fastest thing ever because it's Xbox, and then go into, go into game and then see the result of what I've just modded. That takes like 5 minutes, so let's say I want to like test, which like it might not seem like much, but let's say I want to test like one thing, I have to like do all this process just to test one little change. But yeah, anyway, this is what I've got so far. I'll just show you guys how far I've at least come with testing to see what's possible. Sirs, I'm not sure what's going on in this area, but I've been monitoring some major enemy activity. Mech Warrior, recon the area. We have to figure out what they're up to. Now, as you may have heard, I had custom sound effects play during the grinder uh, showcase, I guess. Now, you might not think this, but just to get sounds working in Mech Assault 2, not like actually coding them themselves, but understanding them, actually took like a lot longer than you'd think. And the reason why is because in Mech Assault 2 coding, if you go to like, if I want to like change a sound effect, I don't type in the name of the sound effect or the file. Each sound effect has an ID, like like a bunch of numbers for the ID. So I have no idea what this ID translates to. Like I don't know what this ID, like so what sound this would play basically. So before I even started doing anything like that, I had to like, kind of like, I want to say reverse engineer, but like, I mean, figure out what code equals what sound effect. So I have a list of every single sound effect in Mech Assault 2 and a list of every single code and every single name for that sound effect. So I can finally like see that this code would equal this sound effect. I know this sounds like really boring, but yeah, that's what I had to do just to even get sound effects to work. Anyway, that was kind of like a long tangent, but back to the mod itself, I'm actually trying to make it very similar to Mech Assault 1. I haven't coded any f everything yet. I haven't even coded like the AI triggers and I'm not triggers, but like yeah, I guess triggers, but AI, like friendly AI and like the mech AI enemy spawns and stuff. That I haven't even touched yet. But that kind of stuff I'm very used to, so that part shouldn't be that hard. I kind of want to focus on making it like more fun. So I added more options for the spawn point in Grinder. I also changed it the spawn point as well if you haven't noticed, but I added more options like the tank and uh, the VTOL. Because I, th I don't know if any Grinder maps in Mech Assault 2 have them, but I always wanted to like use those kind of things in Microsoft 2 Grinder. 
basically I'm trying to like cater to all like play styles not all play styles but like a lot of play styles so if you want to play as like a mech you can still do that if you want to play like as a tank or like battle armor also, also I made battle armor respawn so just in case somehow like you get out of the battle armor and you want to still use the battle armor it'll still be there I couldn't make I could make the mech assault to like mechs spawns like those mechs that you start with I could make them respawn which you might think was like that'd be really cool for it to respawn but mech assault 2 has like an entity limit and the entity limit for mech assault 2 is very tight basically at least for multiplayer maps I think I don't I don't know about campaign but for the multiplayer maps it's pretty tight so if I have too many things spawning in and like too many assets it kind of like it doesn't really make the game stop working, but all special effects basically don't work anymore. Uh, I didn't want that to happen because it looks kind of crap. But yeah, basically spawners in Mech Assault 2, I don't know why spawners specifically, but spawners add a lot to the entity limit, like it takes up a lot. Objects that you just spawn in, like actually just placed on the map, barely take up anything at all. But as soon as I spawn the object, even if it's just one object, I don't know why, but it takes up so much of the entity limit. I don't know why Mech Assault 2 works like this. Mech Assault 1 has like no such thing. I, I don't think there's any entity limit in Mech Assault 1. In Mech Assault 1, you could just keep placing items until the game crashes, basically. In Mech Assault 2, it doesn't have that kind of thing. So it kind of makes it harder to mod make mods. I can't really place like too many mechs in Grinder because yeah, the entity limit will be basically reached. It doesn't stop gameplay. I'm not saying it stops the gameplay from happening. You can still play the game once this entity limit is reached, it basically stops all like special effects from happening so that it can like, I guess what the game is thinking is make the game run faster. But yeah, now you guys know that Mech Assault 2 Grinder Enhanced is definitely something that's going to happen in the future. Oh, and finally for like one of my unfinished mods is I'm pretty sure I showed this in like at least two videos in the past or at least talked about it. But yeah, I've been trying to get Mech Assault 2 AI controllable, like how I have it in Mech Assault 1. But the problem with Mech Assault 2 is, because of the way they programmed the game, they kind of like removed the option for playable AI. Like they, don't, they didn't really want you to do that, that kind of a thing. I don't know if it was on purpose, but just because of the way they've coded everything else. Because they changed the way you control mechs, now that you have to get in and out of a mech, it kind of breaks the way AI work, for controlling them I mean. But a way around that that I found was there's actually a command in the scripts for the like coding of the map that can force you to spawn as like anything, any mech, any whatever. So what I did was I uh, basically forced the game to load the player as an AI. There needs to be like a section that says the ID of the mech, in this case an AI, whatever controllable thing. So I had to replace, I don't know why I replaced, but I had to replace something so that this was even possible. But yeah, this is the closest I've gotten to controlling AI in Mech Assault 2. And technically, this is controlling AI in Mech Assault 2, but with like a lot of things needing to be tweaked and you can't really make it permanent because I had to replace like an actual mech so that this is even possible. And also, the main problem with this is that I don't know why this is the case, but as soon as you start to control AI, you can't shoot any weapons. And I think this might be because they made it so it's like an option for like player weapons and like AI weapons. And anything to do with AI weapons, you can't shoot. And even though I think this is the case, I don't have no idea how you like fix this. But I just want to show you guys the results of what it would look like. It's even possible to control bosses using this method and it's really funny because they actually control pretty well including AI in general but they control pretty well for something that you'd think like shouldn't even be like a thing. I tested uh, a bunch of like different type of AI types similar to Mech Assault 1 like tanks and stuff, helicopters, even infantry but also I don't know if I ever feel sorry showing it in the video but because of the way I like tricked the game into spawning you as AI Technically, it doesn't think you are the AI, it thinks you're the player as inside the AI. So let's say I spawn like myself as infantry. Technically, I'm still myself inside infantry. So if you press the button to get out, 
like as you, as in get out of a mech, it technically still works, which looks stupid as heck. But yeah, first thing I thought of when I saw this was successful was would this work in a multiplayer environment? Now I'm gonna say nine, 99% it's not gonna work. If there's anything like Microsoft One, AI and multiplayer just do not work. I was just thinking, imagine how cool it would be to have like two bosses fighting each other, like you controlling them and someone else controlling it. That would be sick. I haven't tested all the AI obviously. Like I haven't tested spider boss yet or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure it would work. Except the same problem would happen where you can't shoot any weapons. So yeah, it's kind of disappointing, but also progress at the same time. Problem is, I don't know where else to go from here to fix it. Since my Mecha Salt 2 modding knowledge isn't as good as Mecha Salt 1. So yeah. And yeah, that's basically it for what I've been working on in my spare time. And this is actually before I took my break. So I just want to show you guys right now, like everything I've been, not everything obviously, because I have a lot of stuff that I have unfinished other than this. But I just want to show you guys what I have right now that I was kind of working on. So you guys know what basically I was trying to do. Like I had, like I had some more like Microsoft One style mods, like some campaign, I was like testing some campaign stuff because I learned more stuff about the scripts and how they work. I even got like cutscenes to work in Grinder in Rexo 1, which was funny. I mean, I don't think I'll actually, I don't know if I'll, I probably won't actually include that in like action mode, but yeah, anyway, I'm talking too much. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry that I've been taking a break, but I don't even know, like, I'm not even saying this is me stopping my break because I'm kind of like enjoying it, not working on Mega Salt mods at the moment. I'm not going to stop modding Mega Salt, obviously, but. Yeah, I just want to take like a step back, like take my time, you know, not rush or anything. So it might be longer between mod releases now, but I'll be in Discord and stuff like if you have any questions or like there's like a problem with a mod, then obviously I go back and fix it and stuff. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So yeah, I'll see you guys in Discord. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> okay, bye guys. But yeah, I have other multiplayer maps I was going to do, but I didn't want to like...